Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we've got something that a lot of you have been writing in about, the ASUS E403SA, and this is kind of a higher-end, low-end computer from ASUS, uh, powered by an Intel Pentium N3700 CPU, and this retails for about $399. Now, I want to uh, mention before we get into the video that this is on loan from ASUS, so after we are done with this review, uh, we send it back to them. Nobody is paying for this review. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and nobody is reviewing this video before it is posted. So let's get into how all of this looks and works and all that good stuff. So we'll take a look at the hardware first. Uh, it has brushed aluminum here on the surface of the uh, keyboard and trackpad area, plastic on the bottom, uh, plastic here on the front of the screen, but uh, you get metal over here also. Again, a nice brushed aluminum look on it. A pretty attractive casing. 3.3 uh, uh, pounds or about 1.5 kilograms. So it's not that heavy actually. It does feel pretty nice. And it's got a nice big 14 inch display at 1080p. So it's a 1920 by 1080 display. Uh, really nice actually and pretty compact considering that uh, this is a 14 inch display, but it doesn't feel all that big to me. So nice uh, screen size, uh, somewhat decent display. It's not an IPS display. It's a little bit on the dim side. I wish it was, I wish we get a little bit brighter. Even when it's plugged in, it's not as bright uh, as I'd like it to be, but it is a matte finish. So you do get uh, studio lights reflecting back on it, but not much else. So I think you'll, uh, if you don't like those shiny displays, you will like this one. It is not a touch screen, uh, but it is passable and usable. Uh, and again, a full 1080p. Uh, there is a viewing angle issue to it to some degree. So you're not going to get great viewing angles. You really have to get it uh, into its sweet spot to get the best image quality out of it, but you will get a little bit of off angle viewing on it. You'll just quickly lose brightness as you do that. So um, it is, you know, again, you'll see better displays on more expensive computers, but this one is uh, pretty reasonably priced. So again, it's got that N3700 Pentium processor on board, has four gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage, which is nice to see because you can do a little bit more with this uh, than you might with a $200 computer that only has about 32 gigs or so. So you get a good amount of memory, good amount of storage, a decent processor as well, and of course that 14-inch uh, display. It's got 802.11n built in, so you get the 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz wireless networks. Uh, just a VGA webcam though, so I guess they had a, a skimp on something, so not the best uh, video quality out of the webcam that you'll get, but uh, certainly passable. I like the keyboard. It's not, uh, these aren't full-size keys, but they're nice nice uh, evenly spaced apart from each other and uh, you do have some decent travel on them as well so I'm pretty happy with uh, the keyboard performance. I'm also surprised with the trackpad. It actually is very nice, a very nice firm click to it, uh, pretty responsive and uh, nice and large also. This is a really nice trackpad considering the uh, cost of the computer overall. Ton of ports available on this too for you. So you have uh, power to plug it in of course. You've got HDMI, USB 3.0, you've got a USB type C connector here also so you can start using some of your USB C devices headphone microphone adapter on that side over here you've got a SD card slot although it doesn't uh, take the card in very far that's about as far in as it goes so you're not going to get a flush to the side of the computer card there and a USB 2.0 port on this side along with a Kensington lock uh, to lock it down. Speakers sound okay on it. They are on the bottom of the computer. So again, you're going to uh, have uh, the audio kind of reflect the surface that it is sitting on. So if you are looking for the best audio quality, you might want to plug in a pair of headphones to get a little bit better than what uh, the speakers on here can do for you. So that's the hardware outside. Let's take a look and see how it performs. All right, let's begin as I always do with some 4K video on my YouTube channel. So we'll pull that up real quick and see how it performs there. Now remember, we only have a 1080p display here, so it is down converting it to the size of the window here, but I will go full screen with it uh, so we can get a feel for how this plays back. And I have to say the color on this screen, when you have the sweet spot, when you're really looking at it at the right angle, uh, really looks nice on this. It's pretty well balanced. Uh, nice 1080p higher resolution display than you might see on an inexpensive laptop here. So uh, I'm quite pleased with the display overall. Even though it's not an IPS display, there are nicer displays on more expensive computers. Uh, it is sharp and nice and good color, uh, just provided you are looking at it uh, pretty much uh, head on. So as you uh, start to move the angle a little bit, you will lose a little bit of uh, image quality, but really not too bad, again, considering the price tag that you're getting a nice 1080p display uh, for 400 bucks on a Windows computer. So good, good video playback quality here. Looks like we're doing fine on YouTube and whatnot. So I think uh, regular web browsing should also do pretty well. Again, this has got a quad core processor, so it will do a little bit better than some of the dual cores we see in some of the $200 computers because it's able to do uh, more tasks at once. Uh, but you will, of course, get a little bit of slowdown as all the JavaScript and ads and everything uh, kind of load up here on the New York Times. But I think uh, overall as a web browsing device and uh, doing those kinds of things like applications on the web, uh, you should be doing just fine with this. And on the Octane benchmark test, we get a score of 8,000 
10,105, and that test measures in Google Chrome how well it can do the things that web applications require, like JavaScript rendering and HTML and all that good stuff. I did find that it was a little bit slower than two other computers running with this same processor, running that same test. And I'm not sure exactly what to attribute that to, although as you'll see in a few minutes, the gaming performance on this machine is faster than uh, those other two devices running with the same chip. So I don't know if they maybe made some choices to give it a little bit better graphical horsepower at the expense of uh, CPU speed, but we'll see all that uh, in a minute when we get to the gaming benchmarks. But before we do, we got to get a little bit of work done. Uh, so let's look at Microsoft Word here and see how this performs. And I'm pretty impressed with the Microsoft Word performance as I'm just scrolling through here. Uh, it is rendering this uh, newsletter template very nicely. I can move things around and make adjustments to uh, the document here as I go. And what's nice about having a 1080p display uh, versus some of the 720p displays that are typically in the $200 computers is that you do get a lot more things, a lot more ability to fit things on the screen. So it makes working on documents a little bit easier uh, and it's a little bit sharper given that you have a higher resolution here. So really good for uh, getting work done. So if you're curious if this is a good computer for doing schoolwork and whatnot, I think it will definitely accomplish that. Battery life on this is about eight to nine hours in my testing, which actually lines up well with what uh, Asus is advertising on it. It's also fanless, so it doesn't make any noise when it's on. Although I did notice a little bit of heat on the top of the keyboard here when it was under load and it was plugged in, but uh, that's to be expected on fanless computers. They will get a little bit hot, but it won't be alarmingly so. Right, let's take a look at some gaming here. I've got Counter-Strike Go running at uh, 720p right now. I did turn down uh, some of the settings, but not all. I'm getting around anywhere from 15 to 20, sometimes 30 frames per second, depending on what's going on on screen. So I'm sure uh, with a little bit more tweaking, we could get uh, better results. I'll show you my uh, video settings here so you can see what I'm currently configured at. Uh, with these kinds of processors, you're never really going to get uh, awesome gaming performance, but it is improving over time as I'm seeing these processors mature at this price point. Uh, so I'm sure if I turned a lot of this stuff down, I could probably tweak it out and eventually get uh, definitely at least 30 frames per second and maybe close to 60. Again, re reducing image quality and keeping the resolution down uh, at 720p or below. Let's take a look now at Minecraft and see how that works. And Minecraft seems to run pretty well on here. We're getting frame rates up to about 50 frames per second in some spots, so not too bad on the performance front here. Uh, really decent, actually. This is the regular version of Minecraft because I think this is what most people are still running. Uh, we do have the Optifine Performance Enhancing plugin installed to give us a little bit of a performance boost, but uh, really good performance out of here for a low-cost PC. A little jumpy and laggy when I'm moving the uh, trackpad around here. I think it's just the sensitivity settings I have on the trackpad at the moment, but you'll see as I'm moving around, it's very smooth and, again, really nice frame rates there running at the full 1920 by 1080 resolution. And on the 3 d Mark CloudGate benchmark test, we get a score of 2,000 2,602, which is actually a very respectable score uh, for a computer at this price point. So decent performance out of there. I was interested to see that it performs noticeably better than two other computers we looked at recently running with that very same processor. So I don't know if they've tweaked something on the graphics side to make it run a little bit faster, but uh, noticeably better performance on that test. However, it's still not good enough to run Counter-Strike at uh, 1080p with decent settings or Grand Theft Auto or other AAA titles. So don't think you'll be running your high-end games on here anytime soon, but it might be good for casual games and some other stuff. And it's also very good, though, for multimedia applications, especially running uh, high bitrate movie files here. So we have the Force Awakens Blu-ray MKV running uh, with VLC off of a solid state drive here uh, that I have plugged in, uh, working just fine, really nice on this 1080p display, actually, because you do have a nicer uh, display on this $400 computer than you typically get uh, on those $200 computers, which run with usually like a 720p display or something like that. So that is the Asus E403S. A. I'm very impressed with this, as I am with most ASUS computers, because they do deliver a lot of stuff for the money, and this one is no exception. So uh, you get 128 gigs of storage, which is certainly a lot more than many other low-cost PCs will get you. Four gigs of RAM, a 1080p display, not a perfect display, but uh, certainly much better than the 720p displays you see on other computers, and uh, the resolution is uh, definitely nice to see at this price point. Uh, pretty lightweight and compact also. It really doesn't feel like a 14-inch laptop. It has a nice compact feel to it. Uh, and I'm really quite pleased with this. I think this is a very good computer for students who don't need a you know, crazy, powerful gaming computer but want something that's decent for getting work done and maybe browsing the web and watching some movies on the side. They will do all of those things quite well uh, at a very reasonable price. So I can definitely recommend this one for people in the market for something around that $400 price tag. I do think it's a pretty good value for the money. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more.
And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv s.